But the question is, if you dive in like this, what are the Dalits going to do when they call out the pagans? <laughs> I always say, the machine is coming, two people won't have a job. Rabbis and funeral directors. <laughs> Hi. I just want to relearn a little bit of what we learned yesterday. And again, the sad truth is, I, when I spoke to Dovah Tulin South, he didn't have any gemorrhage with me. And the Ramada when it sounds, he don't have anything either. Stupid. But nevertheless, basically what I will never see this morning, just a little bit. Can you see the book on the no, right now, it'll take too long, you know. This is the biggest two in, in, in Brochus, you know. But she has shown him, but I, I just want to throw something at you. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't say it was. Yeah, please. You know, rather before Rabbeinu Kodesh, rather before he left the world, he says to his children, Amun and Zag, thank you for coming. Something like that. He says to his children, so far I was taking care of you. From now on, you have to take care of me. He said, the bone eye on his soul. Uh, anyway, I'm sure, Micha, you're doing a lot for your brother. I'm sure this is not the first time you're thinking of him. But we in this world will never know how much we're doing for those on the other side. I want you to know something, the deepest judgment, whenever you think of somebody in this world, the Mamash Pilas, the Zerkot says there is no such a thing, me thinking of somebody and, and they are not thinking back of me at the same time. Unbelievable. I'm thinking. Anyway, today is the outside of Mira's brother Motra in Khantia. Good. Can you imagine how long your brother was sitting up there waiting for Heaven to get together and learn for his name? Yeah, yeah. You know what's special about this world? That we never know how good it is what you're doing. Because if you would really know how good it is, we'd be crazy. Imagine if I would know how important it is to say hello to people on the street. I wouldn't have time to sleep, right? I'd run around the streets of the world like crazy the whole time and say, hello, Moise, hello, Yanko, hello, Fritz, hello, Hans, you know, I was like crazy. Thank God it's what you're doing so much. Thank <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> But you see, okay, let, let's assume any myths in the world, right? So I, I want to bless you today to have a little taste, a tiny little taste. How much, how much you mean, how much it means to your brother that you are thinking of him. Okay, now I want to tell you something. You know, there is, there is something very deep in, in, in the whole chart, and without even getting involved in the depth, it's just throwing it at you. You know, but when it comes time for me to do a mitzvah, you know, we, we always talk about oil mitzvahs, the yoke of mitzvahs. You know, the yoke, like someone grabs you by your neck. How <laughs> much? Uh, and you can move. You know, when it comes time, to put on film like the film, you know. Put their hands on me and say, hey brother, you got to put on film, right? Oh, let's say for all the holy sisters come to bench lift. How does it feel, right? You know, like, like the holy candles are putting the holy hands on your neck. Hey, you better bench lift, right? Hey, you're watching, 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 hey, you have to bench lift, right? What? I know, I said the holy hands, you know. Not hands which hurt, you know. It feels so good, right? We are holding massage. But you feel, Mamish, you have to, right? What's wrong and after that? When the baby's crying, you have to. 
The question is, and this is only you to know, just some of it. A baby has to circumcise after eight days, right? The father was on a trip to Hong Kong and he thought it's not so important. He comes back and maybe and then he has another girlfriend in, you know, in Singapore. <laughs> and then he comes back and then he makes the bristle a happier later. The question is, is this a, a one-time affair? He didn't do it on time and he's doing it late. Or is every second he didn't do it on a day? Every second. I'm sure you remember some of those random articles. Because whenever you have to do something and you didn't do it, every second you didn't do it is an extra day. Or, you know, after eight days, a person can be serving when he's 50, 60, right? Imagine someone lives 100 years and the last second of his life he serving that is also good, right? And he has to. But davening is something else in the deepest depth, or maybe not. When it comes time to daven, and again, I want you to understand in the deepest, deepest depth. The thing of davening is deeper than putting on film, deeper than benching wood. Just darling, like I'm not going to my whole life depends on it. It's a different kind of fear. Like, I'll tell you something. Imagine the secretary has to check in 9 o'clock, right? Would you say this checking in 9 o'clock is the same like she is Mukuyo to type a letter for the boss? Is it, it's a completely different fear, right? The fear of, she gets paid, the secretary, I have to type the letter. The checking in is deeper than all this, right? Much deeper. So the thing is, I have to check in by God three times. I have to check in the morning, check in the afternoon, a little holy check in as a Jew, the thing is, how, how long can I wait if not checking in? And how much does that exclude everything else? And um, so I just want to go over it first again. And you see what it is, something else, which I forgot to tell you yesterday. Do you need anybody more holy and more strong than Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bodhi to? Remember I told you yesterday that Rabbi said Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bodhi to when he davened, Brother Satan comes to God and says, what do you need the Bethlehem Mikdash for? Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bodhi to is not having all the kavonas of the Kohen Gud. I have to show this thing because I'm so glad to see Brother Alon. And I think this is one story I never tell you. I just get to know. Yeah? Do you want to make a break? No, no, I just want to say that with some of the relating to um, the Sultan Aro and the Iskotan Bet, I'll go to your hand. You want to just tell them what's all about? No. I should go. She won't go. Okay, I just, we'll learn inside in two seconds. I just want you to know what it's all about. The question is, how much freedom you have in the morning before you die? How much is it like you you have to check in? So the secretary says, you know, uh, I, was, I was cleaning the, the ashtrays and I forgot to check in late. Yeah, this is very cute, you know. You have to check in. Or can say, no, she was also working for the office, right? You know, when I, when I walk around saying hello to people, I'm also working for God. I don't say that you completely dismiss the Rabban Shleider. But what you have to do, you have to die. But anyway, and to make it very fast, the Heilige Robschütze, the Heilige Zizre Robschütze, you know, his daughter, one of his daughters, and they're talking about the shit of the the Chem Bosferner, you have to say it again? No. He was, he was a rabbi in, in Warsaw, 
I mean, to be the, the rabbi in Warsaw at the time of Sia Publin, you, you gotta be a Gerav, right? I mean, Gerav, right? So, anyway, so he has a son, also a grown Adil, 15 years old, and the officer is on his way to Warsaw to look at the Chosen for his daughter. He passes by a little state on it. You know, he traveled all night. In the morning, he comes, he comes to the synagogue, and uh, he wants to daven. And there he sees a boy, a bar mitzvah boy, the son of the shamas, obviously, and he's making a fire on the shore, throwing in wood. And you know, the to could read the art, right? He sees that this boy of 13 is machad and the kavonas, of the Kohen Gordon and Yom Kippur of Peter Maktar. <coughs> I can't believe it. A little boy here, you know, we think we are sitting in Oblin, the sea of Oblin, and we know all the Kavonas. 13 years old, in he is Machaven, all the Yehuda, all the concentrations, and all the, what, whatever it is. What? All the Kavonas. How do you say Kavona? Meditation. Meditation. He thinks this is crazy. I'm not going to water to get the son of the son. This is my son-in-law. But again, you don't do anything without the Rebbe, right? He goes right back to the thing. And he says, Rebbe, I'm not going to water. I met the son of the shamans of that state. And he's Mechavan the Kavona of the Queen Guru. An ordinary morning, like today, Monday morning, he throws in the fire. I can't believe it. See, Lublin says, no, I think you should stick that to water. And you know, in Dublin, <coughs> Dublin was very strong. He never said, you have to. But on his way to the water, he goes there again. This time he comes earlier, he arrives at three in the morning, and he's going to the mikveh, and there's a little boy, is in the mikveh. He is Mechavan, the Kavonis of the Kohen God when he was immersing himself in Yom Kippur on an ordinary day. You know what that means? By this boy was Yom Kippur every day, right? He said, I don't care what the Rebbe said. I don't care. This is my son-in-law. He packs him up, talks to his father. If they want him as a son-in-law, take him straight to the Blin. This is awesome. Did you, ever, did you ever hear me telling you this? No. Do you remember that? Let me know. Yes, yeah, good, I'm telling you. <laughs> Give me a pen, I have to write down some letters here. I want to remember properly. Okay, I don't remember what it was. It was one of the last Seifim of Shogun is like, it goes like this. Tov ein pei bed. <coughs> and the Seifim Shogun is sitting there and holding the Shogun Oog. What? The last thing is that, the last, uh, yeah. Is Mama the last or one of the last? Okay. He says to this little boy, his name was Osho. He says, Osho, what does it mean? He says to him, I pay means there of Pesach, and two pays means Tisha B'Av. Mm -hmm. He says, okay, now we go. Do you know what he meant to tell him? They're hating the Blina took off on Tisha B'Av. And this little boy Osho died on Earth Pesach. No problem. He told him, I know when I'm leaving the world, and I know when you are leaving the world. Anyway, this Rab Osho became the son in law of the Holy Rab Shitze. And when Rab Shitze left the world, the Holy Son became a Khosi of Rab Osho. Why did they get mixed up now with Kavonis? I don't know.
And you know something else? The deepest question in the world is... Okay, I'm saying it inside. Given she geared the man's feeling, and also, which is also something very special. You know, by the world, there's a time to eat breakfast, there's a time to eat lunch. Okay, some of us, holy hippolach, are not so much aware of this, but the straight world, you know, it's now time for breakfast, now time is now it's time for lunch. But in heaven it's all, in heaven there is such a thing. In heaven, there's a heavenly class. You know, like it says, the other noise the name is Ochlom, you feed them the eat toys. God's plan. No, God has also a time. And in the morning it's time to die. And the question is, how much do you have freedom not right away to die? So he says, when the time comes to daven, also la hakdim le pesra verbin shon. When the time comes to daven, you cannot socialize, you cannot go to another person to say to them even just one word shalom. <coughs> and you know what is very clear? You obviously are not permitted to start a conversation. But I would say, because it's God's name, so I'm, com I'm talking to God all the time. But still not. Because when you say shalom to another person, as much as it's God's name, but there is like a little bit somewhere between me and God, if there is such a thing. Right now you have to die. Bishum, bishmoy shalakosh boh, shalom. You know what that means? Remember, we were learning yesterday, if I, if I begin talking to somebody, in the middle of talking, I talk to somebody else. You see, you're talking to me, right? The moment I utter the word Shalom, I'm already addressing God. And then I, I talk to somebody else, it's like an insult. Our Muslim alarmed itself with the more talk. But he has a right just to say good morning. Well, when he says good morning, he's not, he's not really saying God's name. And also, you see, friends, we have no idea. You know, I once heard from the Bible Shabbat, that was first time. You know, imagine I'm coming from a planet, and then I'm walking into, uh, in a, how do you say that plant where you, where you uh, produce atomic weapons? Uh, a nuclear plant. What? A nuclear plant, right? And I walk in there, see all those machines, and I'm a famous piano player, so I'm putting my hand on those buttons, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Play piano. It's crazy, you the same world, right? You have to know where the buttons are, right? You see, in the morning, when it's time to daven, the moment I utter the word Shalom, I'm pushing a button. Because right. so now it's time to die. Because right now the gates are open. If you push the button, you utter God's name, you're somewhere else, right? And you can't just say it another human being. It's not just beautiful. You can say good morning, but don't push those buttons, which is God's name. But feel as they and a mother and a good son left us. Leos is the ethic. And even this is not permitted only if you have to do some business. Aber im Eno Heuler, Ella Hakri von der Freuden Philip. But he doesn't need to do it right now. He's just doing it in the feast like saying hello before he dies. I feel as they are not sure. Even that is not permitted. You know, I tell you what, when I was little, I remember the word mm -hmm. Stephen. Remember I told you in Baden where I live, Baden the Wien, Brother Joe's territory, a little bit. You know, there were two, this Mathersian. One was, they called Oberländer. You know, they were Mamish, all Stephen was the best for you, you know. 
and, and, and hungry Oberlin, or Bala and Ari and Anna. And then the other ones of his map is a Chsidim, Shinnu Chsidim, Hemigir Chsidim. There was one Sadigir Chosid, his name was Herkliger. He would come into the Vizmav at 7 in the morning, I'm telling you, he would sit by the window, and he would split a cigarette, right? But if you don't take it to your mouth, it goes out, right? He would sit there with a cigarette, and you think he's looking out of the window? He would sit there 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15. Completely out. Not in this world, right? To bring himself to that one. But I remember a few times, you know, my father was sweet. I would see Mr. Klieger running to the smothers. He wouldn't stop anything in the world. He wouldn't say hello, he wouldn't say good morning, he wouldn't say good night. He was in another world. He was on another planet. So he says, but if you... Yeah. So he says, the same also the Kroyalar is a mushroom the Pizcha. And this is very important thing. You know, in formal good days, when you say hello, Mamish bow down a little. But right now, downing is the time when I bow down before God. You know what bowing down means? When I stand like this, that means my head is the highest thing in the world. Right? When I bow down means that it is beyond my head. My head isn't so high anymore. You know, Bishwana Esther, why do I go down all the time with my head? Because downing is beyond my head. Beyond is beyond everything which I understand. And here, I want you to know something. You remember the learning is very, very important. And Munishlema, to believe, is not below understanding. It's the deepest kind of understanding. It is the deepest kind of understanding. So when I bow down, means I extract myself from the head understanding and I'm going to become the Shama understanding. You know, little children, they want always us to bend down, right? Not because they want to make us shorter, because my children, they're just coming from heaven. They want me to know, like, you think really your head knows everything? Your head knows nothing, right? It's so much deeper. So much deeper than this. So he says, you're not permitted to, be, to bow down. Because the moment you bow down, it's also, you're pushing such an unbelievable button in heaven. Awesome button in heaven. He cannot stop. But then, the other shit is, you're not permitted to bend down to anybody, even if you didn't know that. Just like, the very act of bowing down is already the beginning of that. And this is very deep, and I said enough, I didn't, didn't have time to learn the whole Gemara, but it's good. Maybe one of you have a, one day you'll take out this page and you look up the Gemara and Brochus. In history of our Kabrochus, Ein Lokus Kukach. Okay, this is where the whole big shiny and big more, but here, right in the Bishyotis, you know, Mamish Pastor and Sister. When if he didn't say the Brochus already, if he did say the Brochus, that means at this point, whatever he does is darling. Whatever you do is darling. The moment you say the Brochus, the moment the secretary checked in, whatever he does is for the bus, right? It's a different kind of thing. If he ain't a masculine in the Pisgah and he doesn't go especially over there, only she put him over there, met him on the way, and a little short. Now I remember I was in the middle of saying what that he used with Israel. First of all, I'm sure you know Rabbi Yitzhak with this when he woke up. The first thing he would say, could, 
גוד מורנינג רבי נשלח. 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 saying good morning number to all the children who have no father and no mother. So it's not like what, what that children most said in the morning. There's nobody there to say good morning to them. Or maybe that children one is missing. Let me ask you, how would it sound to you? I woke up from the Yitzchak and said, this is the Yitzchak. Here, Shono, can you please? <laughs> How does that feel? Do you think it's a conflict? Mm-hmm. Yeah? No, not for the mother you talk. Yeah, that's it. You're always on top. Why do you think it's not a conflict? It's not a conflict because he's doing God's work. Where he's doing... You're saying about Yitzchak. Yeah, you said it, but you're saying about Yitzchak. Let me ask you something. I'll tell you another thing. I'll make it more simple. Let's say... Holy Josh, imagine someone wakes you up in the morning and says, you have to come, someone is sick. So you will say, I got to daven first, I got to daven first, even not even permitted to say good morning, right? That's not to you. Well, you're crazy. Someone needs you. Somebody needs you. And that's if you're a doctor and someone needs you, it means this is what your neshama has to do in this world. You know what's so special? Every person has two kinds of missions in life. One is general, every year has to daven, every year has to keep Shabbat. And then I have something special, just me. Just me. And the just me is much stronger than what everybody is doing. You know, Blood Yitzhak, when he said to those kids, good morning, I mean, just can you imagine We would once in our life, we would have the privilege to have that Yitzhak with Dichwa, to have that Yitzhak with Joel Sasha, to walk up to one of us and say, good morning, right? Mm-hmm. Put your neshama on fire, right? It's saving somebody's life. Saving Mamish, give them so much life. You know. you know, when we say hello, it's sweet. I would have easily with Mamish give up life. I just want you to know this. He said good morning to every child who had never a father or mother. And then he also walked around telling good morning to all the widows. Never. Who can be massacred? Like that? The Yesh Omrim shall feel the most available shook, the Yamala in the top with the most. And the other shit is that even if you meet somebody on the street, you're not permitted to say shalom. You also say good morning. And friends, you know, from this whole learning, the only takeaway, really, this, this is for real. In the morning before you daven, when you meet somebody, you don't say shalom. Simple as it is. You can say good morning, you say it's tough for the more tough. And I want you to know, I this, and Bob, Bob Rebbe said, why well, do you say good Shabbos? Shabbos is good, right? They are like him as our guitar. You say good, good. Shabbos is good. <laughs> What do you say good Shabbos? So he says good Shabbos means you should be good enough to have a vessel to receive the goodness of Shabbos. <laughs> so when I, I say to you, good morning, the morning is good, right? Good morning means you should be good enough. Your vessel, your vessel should be big enough And pure enough. You know, you know what the Zohar Kodesh says? The king wants to give me wine. I'm coming here with the hair and plate. And I say, give me some wine. He says, listen to me. Even if I give you the wine, it'll smell from the air. I'm not going to make my wine, you know. Give me a clean plate. You know, in the morning, you remember, all the season before they daven, they would not go to the mikveh. And you know something? They are something in the world, even the lowest person in the world. When they wake up in the morning, the mama should wash them. They want to wash themselves. Because there is something in the air 
I really want God to give me the best month, the best day. And I really need to, to wash my vessels a little bit. Remember that a person who says,